Come down. Any questions of what we covered so far? All right. Mm -hmm. All right, student, would y'all help Sister Joyce out on the third, on, on, the, on the carnal side? What was the third thing that we said that is descriptive of the carnal life? You're under the law of sin and death. Okay? And uh, can anybody give her a verse of scripture that, that, uh, that refers to the law of sin and death? Give her a scripture. Romans 8 and 2. Okay. Any other questions? Any other questions on anything that we talked about tonight? Flip side of number three. Uh, on which side? The spirit side or the carnal side? The victorious side. Well, we are under, you know, somebody tell her. I let one, one of my students raise her hand. On, the, on the, third, the third description of the spirit-filled life, what did it say? Uh, Deacon Gardner. Okay, you're free from the law of sin and death, but what law are you under? Okay, you're under the law. Yes, the law of the spirit of life. And that's also in verse 2 of Romans 8. All right. Any, any other questions? Any other questions? All right. Okay. We're going to conclude tonight. And uh, uh, let's look at verses... 14, we're going to go on down to Romans 8 and 14, which, which really summarizes the position and the power and the victory that is in the life of the spirit-filled believer, okay? And we're going to start with, uh, with verse 14 of Romans 8, which lets us know that we are what? Sons of God. Y'all help me say it. We are sons and daughters of God. Because we rejoice in now in the, in the spirit-filled life. And it says, let's read together. For as many as are led by the spirit of God. What? They are the sons of God. Okay? Not only are we sons of God. Because this entire chapter talks about the victorious spirit-filled believer. We are heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Verse 17, let's read that. And if children, then we are heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we be also glorified together. That, that helps us to go through with what we're going through. Just like we, are, we suffer with Christ, we're going to reign with him. All right? Uh, let's look at verses uh, 26 and 27. And that lets us know that the spirit-filled believer has the intercession of the Holy Spirit which strengthens us in our prayer life. Hallelujah. That's really important because Luke 18 and 1 says what? Men ought always to pray and not to faint. So as strong as you are in your prayer life, that's how strong you're going to be. And the Holy Spirit assists us or strengthens us in our prayer life. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Those of you that are baptized in the Holy Spirit, you go to praying. Sometimes you don't know what to pray. What happens? Holy Spirit start praying. Sometimes you don't know what he's saying. But that Holy Spirit will start praying through you and start talking in that heavenly language to God the Father. And you'd be like a little kid sitting there, amen, and listening to that conversation between two adults. You just don't understand what they're saying. Even though the Holy Spirit is talking through you, you know what I'm saying? He go to praying. You don't even know what he's saying sometimes. Amen? But when you're speaking in, the, when you're speaking in that other tongue or the, the language of angels, what's happening in your spirit is like a battery being recharged. Hello, somebody. The understanding is unfruitful, but your spirit is edified. But let's look at that. Verse 26. Likewise, what? The Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Verse 27. Verse 
for it maketh the intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So we are sons of God. We are heirs of God and joint heirs. We have the intercession of the Holy Spirit, which strengthens our prayer, which strengthens our prayer life. And then, uh, verse 37, and we're going to back up, but verse 37 lets us know that we are what? We are more, y'all hear me say, we are more than conquerors. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you're more than a conqueror. For he declares that in the first verse, he says there is no condemnation. Am I right? But in the 35th verse, he also lets us know there is no what? No separation. Y'all ever say no condemnation? And no separation. And he asked a series of questions here in verse 35. What did he say? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation... Name them things. Distress. Persecution. Mm -hmm. A sword. He goes on to say, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed as it, and we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all things, we are more than conquerors. What makes you more than a conqueror? According to the eighth chapter of Romans. What makes you more than a conqueror? Uh, Y'all don't want to talk. That, the Holy Spirit. That's why Paul was able to say this. We are more than conquerors. 